hello. So it's pretty early on Saturday, the day we are starting this 24 hour readathon and I'm very excited. So two things, I don't recommend doing a 24 hour read along after having slept for only five hours and going to bed at 2 a.m. <laughs> but here we are doing it anyways. And I've actually already started reading my first book. It, you know, we're pretty chill on this channel. It is a loose 24 hours, anything goes. So I'm not just like strictly reading from 10 a.m. today till 10 a.m. tomorrow, I'm cutting out sleeping time. You guys know we've talked about this a couple times. So let's talk about everything I plan to read for the next approximately 24 hours, mostly just my Saturday and Sunday reading and reading as much as I can possibly read this entire weekend. So let me get the books. It's a lot. I have bitten off more than I can chew, friends, and let's get into it. So first things first with this TBR, there, for the physical books that I wanna read that are actually like novels, there's two classics. So the first one being Carmilla by Sheridan Le, Le Fanu. And this is the classic that inspired Dracula. I talked about this in my Come Book Shopping With Me vlog, if you wanna go check that out. But I did not know this. So basically, there's this woman at this isolated castle, and as she is a girl, she sees this ghost or this other girl in the middle of the night, like putting her hands in the sheets almost, and no one believes her. They just kinda of all write it off. They search the house, they're like, honey, no one's here. Later on, this carriage basically this woman and her daughter come by the castle and the daughter has to stay there. And it turns out it's the girl from Carmilla from our main characters past. So that's kind of all I know right now. Laura is the girl who saw the ghost a while ago and Carmilla is the little girl. Deep in the Austrian forest where Laura is isolated. And then it says Carmilla becomes increasingly strange and volatile, prone to eerie nocturnal wandering. So yeah, I just, so it's supposed to be like a gothic female, female romance. And that sounds very interesting to me. I've certainly never read that. Also a gothic piece of lesbian literature from the 1800s. Let's do it, let's do it. So this is a very short, it's like a three hour long audiobook. If you guys don't know, most classics are available for everyone uh, through like Audible, um, just included in your membership or through a lot of library services, since it's a classic, you generally don't have to have like a wait list um, and you don't have to pay for classics from my experience. So I will say, I'll catch you guys up later, but I did begin listening to this as I was showering and getting ready this morning. Now, the only other physical novel that I hope to complete, fingers crossed throughout this time, is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, because I've never read this classic. And so we've got a female author of a horror novel that's a classic, and I just have been out of the loop. I really need to read it. What was the year that Frankenstein was published? I hate when they don't put the original date of the text. If it's like a new edition, like I really wish that they did that. So obviously I know the general story of Frankenstein because I am a human, <laughs> um, but I've never read the book. I really have avoided like movies or things like that as a child because I thought that they were relatively scary and I just don't know what to expect. I know I've tried reading this before and at least some of it is written in letter format. I don't know if the whole thing is that way or there's just letters throughout. So I think that I will listen to the audiobook as I read along with this, do like a little immersion reading. I hope that I can find a good narrator or cast or whatever it may be because this is my other audiobook. So that's my hope since this is like three hours. I think this is like eight hours. I'm hoping to listen to both of them within the next two days. I think I should be able to, but you are my creator, but I am your master. Obey. So these are the two full novels, these classics. Now there are a couple more like texts that I would like to read. In fact, I know for sure I will. And the first thing being, I have the complete collection of Edgar Allan Poe and I have read a lot of Edgar Allan Poe in the past. So I don't know yet whether I will revisit something I've already read or choose something new. But yeah, this has more than 130 short stories and poems by Edgar Allan Poe. I'm very excited to read more Poe because I very much enjoy his 
work. Now, the other thing is brand new to me and that is HP Lovecraft. So I think actually, oh God, this edition is just so stunning once again. Um, I really think I might start with At the Mountains of Madness, which is first in here. And then I don't know, but you got, I know for sure that you guys recommended that one and that is 125 pages. So who knows if I'll be able to finish it, but I think I'm going to start with that tale by HP Lovecraft. Now I'm just going to quickly list these. And then once I get to reading them, I'll kind of go over what they're about. So the graphic novels that I'm going to read over the next two days, no doubt about it, we will be completing them. Fangs by Sarah Anderson, cute, tiny little graphic novel with very large panels and very few pages. I know I'll get through that. Um, Witches volume one, which will work for my witch prompt for the bingo board, which I will fill in for you as we're going. Uh, so I know nothing about this, but I'll update you guys once I start it. And Basketful of Heads by Joe Hill. And there's no reason I shouldn't be able to get through these three because I mean, graphic novels are fairly quick and easy to read. So three graphic novels to get through today and tomorrow. Now my manga list is kind of outrageous. So bear with me here. Um, I would really like to read volume one of Demon Slayer. I purchased it just for this readathon. I've started the show before, but I kind of wanted to read the manga first. So really would like to read this since I'm familiar with the story already. Maybe it'll go rather quickly. And then what I'm not so familiar with is Blood on the Tracks Volume 1. I really want to read this during this readathon, so this is definitely going to be a priority. It's one that has seemed eerie and I've had my eye on for a while. And then I also really want to read Parasite Volume 1, which you guys all had great things to say about. It seems overall there's not a ton of text, but I mean, this is already a lot of manga. With these three volumes, I don't read manga as quickly as some people do, but there are two more manga. The one I bought just for this readathon once again, and that is Tomi. So this will probably be my main priority by Junji Ito because who doesn't want this uh, femme fatale who seduces men and kills them who have wronged women? That's all I want in life. That's all I want. So this is so big though. I mean, it is so many pages. It is seriously huge, almost 800 pages, but I'm determined to read this this weekend. What should I start with you guys? And then the other one I have is Uzumaki. I have heard from you guys that some of you are still scared like years later. I thought this has to do with spirals. I think this has to do with, I mean, that would make sense because that's kind of a spiral. I don't understand why spirals are scary, but I suppose we'll just get into it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these chunks of novels and it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a fun couple days. I am really excited to do reading sprints with all of you and just get all of the spooky reading and listening in. And I'm going to have to find some tasks to complete around the house today, probably to listen to some audiobooks. Maybe I'll rearrange the library for a bit. I definitely want to do that because I don't just want Wheel of Time and Malazan in my background anymore because, you know, like there's life outside of those. Anyways, this is a long enough clip. I'm going to go make some breakfast before it is time for our first reading sprint and I'll catch up with you guys later. So I thought I would just do a little update of what I've been reading for the first set of reading sprints, which just finished up a bit ago. I started with HP Lovecraft at the Mountains of Madness. So this is 129 pages and I'm on page 45 right now. So I did read for a little bit more after the reading sprint because it's kind of dense. So it reads a little bit on the slower side, but I think for my first impression of Lovecraft, I'm enjoying it. I think he is doing an excellent job of setting up this atmosphere, making it very creepy um, on edge. The descriptions are excellent. It's very scientific at times and very, very description heavy. But I, for some reason, my brain still has a hard time picturing things at times. So I don't find that to be any fault of the authors because like I said, I think he's doing a good job with it. It's just, I have a hard time picturing things in 
in general. But yeah, it's an interesting time. My first Lovecraft tale and I would say I'm enjoying it. I'm looking forward to reading the rest of it, actually. I thought it was gonna be kind of a slog because of it feeling very dense and scientific. However, I actually don't wanna stop reading it even right now. This morning in my TBR, I did tell you guys that I started reading, nope, not Fangs, that's not it. Carmilla, I'm about halfway through this as well. I'm listening to the audiobook for that one. And it's same thing, like this very gothic tone eerie, creepy vibes, nothing overtly scary or horrific. At this point, I'm pretty sure our main character, Laura, has been bitten by a vampire, <laughs> um, which she does not know it yet. So I'm curious to see more how this turns into a love story. And I'm definitely enjoying that as well. I have to say, it's a pretty good start for me enjoying everything that I've picked up for this readathon so far. So I think I'm gonna take a tiniest little break from reading at the Mountains of Madness and actually look through fangs or witches or a little of both because there's no pressure. All I have to do is read this weekend. <laughs> Even though it's hard for me, I was saying in the reading sprints that like I can't sit down and read for hours at a time. It's just like my personality cannot do it. My attention span cannot do it. So it's gonna be interesting for me to try to read all day and all weekend, but I'm gonna show you a little owl fox. Honey girl, you wanna join? She's like, ah, so. Witches or fangs, more Carmilla. I should finish soon. It's very short and Lovecraft. Here's a nice, here's a nice little pile of what we've got going on today. I forgot to say too that I did watch a little bit of scary stuff last night. I watched Resident Evil, the first one, and a bit of Castlevania because it was time for a rewatch and I'm still chugging along at Midnight Mass, which does creep me out, absolutely. But I'm gonna continue reading Fangs because that's what I picked up when the delivery people got here. Before I start the next reading sprints, I just wanna say I finished Fangs and it was absolutely delightful. Like I kept taking pictures of all of the pages because I wanted to share them because I loved them so much. And then I was like, okay, stop. Because at this point you've taken a picture of like every single page. But, oh my God, it was absolutely delightful. If you're interested in it at all, please pick it up. It was it was so adorable. It was so funny. It was punny. Like, it was just, I can't, I'm gonna read it again. I feel like I'll read it again today. Five out of five stars, excellent time. So I've been reading Frankenstein. I should say listening to it. And then I sat down and opened it up to go back and reread some with my eyes because I was having trouble like grounding myself without seeing the names and everything from the letters. And how stunning is this? My affection for my guest increases every day. He excites at once my admiration and my pity to an astonishing degree. How can I see so noble a creature destroyed by misery without feeling the most poignant grief? He is so gentle yet so wise. His mind is so cultivated and when he speaks, although his words are called with the choicest art, they yet flow with rapidity and unparalleled eloquence. Isn't that just stunning? The writing is absolutely beautiful so far. So I'm hoping, we got kitties galore. I'm hoping that I keep loving it as much as I am right now. Ronnie and Parasite and Tomy. Even though I'm done with sprints for the day, the reading is continuing on. Hello. Still have my sleep, face, voice, everything. Uh, yesterday was a fun day of reading. I thought we'd do a little check-in before getting started with day two of the 24-hour readathon. It's funny because I kept talking about how I was up so late Friday night. And so I was like, you know, originally I had planned to stay up late for the readathon and like lose sleep that night. And that's just not how life went. So I went to bed before 9.30 and I kept waking up all night because my body does not like to sleep more than six hours. And I did not let myself get out of bed until 7.30, <laughs> which like never happens, but it's pretty early still now, but let's go over what I read yesterday and what I plan to read today. Okay, first things first with uh, HP Lovecraft, my man here, I read out The Mountains of Madness. 
and gave it a 2.75 out of five stars. I am sorry for all my fans of Lovecraft and that story. I was relieved in the live reading sprints to find out that many of you guys felt similarly about that story. Um, I think it was just too overly detailed scientific for me. Like I enjoy science in my books, but it just made me not care. Like I just found myself feeling very apathetic. I found myself feeling like it was dragging on. I did not feel invested, even though I could really appreciate the writing and descriptions. And I think that he did a good job with a lot of it. For some reason, I just couldn't care. So that was my first experience with Lovecraft. And I think I will read The Call of Cthulhu next um, because that's much shorter and I'm really hoping to enjoy that one. I don't know if I'll get to it today. Uh, one of the next things that I read is Just the Telltale Heart for like the 1500th time in my life. I love that story. It is so short. And for some reason, it never gets old. It's perfect for Halloween time. I love the way that it's written. I don't know that I'll read anything else by Poe during these 24 hours, just time-wise. Yesterday, I also finished, started and finished Carmilla. And this is the one that I said inspired, Dracula. I gave this a 3.75 out of five stars. Found it very enjoyable. It read very much like a classic horror, which in my opinion, never goes that like extra step that a lot of times horror books do and nowadays. So I definitely, really recommend this if you're interested, if you're interested in the beginnings of the horror genre. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Dracula actually, so I think I actually enjoyed this a little bit more than I liked Dracula, but it was creepy. It was good Halloween time vibes, so I enjoyed Carmilla. I also read the entire volume one of Witches and I gave this a three out of five stars. I don't know that I'll continue on with this, to be honest. So one thing, I'm, I'm gonna try to find a page here. Mm, I feel like that's not gonna show up well. I wanna say that like I loved the art and I found the art style like very creepy. So I definitely appreciated the color scheme and the art in this book, but I feel like the plot was a little bit all over the place. In We would have flashbacks, sometimes almost unlabeled, but then I couldn't tell like what the actual goal was, especially with these witches, that the, their motive was unclear. We just got like one little line about it, I feel like, and maybe we'll get more in the next one, but I don't know for sure if I will continue on with this, but I liked this well enough. Like I said, I gave it a three out of five, so that means I still recommend it. I also read the entirety of Fangs yesterday, which is like my new favorite thing in the whole world. Every single page is like just absolutely perfect. It is so precious. Uh, having this vampire and werewolf fall in love. Like it's so quirky, it's so lighthearted, it's so sweet and adorable, very humorous, makes you laugh out loud, and it's so short too. Like I said, the panels, there is not a lot on each page, so I highly recommend this. Fabulous time, super glad I own it. I'm sure I'll read it again next year. Okay, I also read a volume one of Blood on the Tracks last night and I gave this a three out of five stars as well. I will definitely continue on with this because I'm interested. Now this reads in like two minutes because it is mostly the art, not a lot of text panels. Um, and the art is gorgeous. Like you get a lot of those full page illustrations. I'm gonna try to find another one just cause I think they're really beautiful. But yeah, I, I'm really curious why the character did this one act <laughs> that is pretty horrific. But besides that, it was like, you're just getting so much introduction that I feel like I couldn't rate it above three stars, but maybe we'll get more in the next. So that's why I definitely want to continue on with that. Here go Ronnie. What else here? Okay, I did begin in the house in the dark of the woods during the very last reading sprint last night. So that might be what I read this morning. And I am 10% of the way through it, I think on page 24 and very interested. I like what I've read so far. I like the writing style and I like the idea focusing on a lot of female characters and she's headed off into the woods following this one lady and the lady leaves her with another lady and there's just kind of like some weird things happening and I'm obsessed with this cover, so obsessed. So I just started that. Also, holy, you know, okay. Y'all let me sleep on this book for so dang long and I'm upset about it. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. What the actual hell? So female horror author, first thing, check, love it. But the writing is absolutely 
stunning. Like it's beautiful. And the concept is very interesting as well. A man obsessed with science. Like I think we know the basis of Frankenstein, but had I known the writing was going to be this beautiful, I wouldn't have waited so long. Just listen to how beautiful this is. While my companion contemplated with a serious and satisfied spirit the magnificent appearances of things, I delighted in investigating their causes. The world was to me a secret which I desired to divine. Curiosity, earnest research to learn, the hidden laws of nature, gladness akin to rapture, as they were unfolded to me, are among the earliest sensations I can remember. Just, there's so many sentences like that that I've like tabbed. So right now I'm about 30% into it and have to finish it today for the readathon because I love it so much, you guys. It is just such an excellent book. I'm so glad because a lot of times classics fall short for me. So I, I don't know, this one just is really doing it. And it's interesting because I've heard a lot of people say they like it. And then I've heard a lot of people say they were disappointed by it. So I really didn't know where I'd fall. And I just thought it was going to be okay because I tend to not love a lot of horror classics specifically, but this is doing it for me. I love it. Okay, and the last one that I started last night is Tomi by Junji Ito. Thank goodness I finally started this and I am only on page 65, which is the basement, which is the start of like the second story. And I'm literally already loving it. Um, just look at the art. It's absolutely beautiful. Even these pages. So I, I just love the idea of this girl coming back and haunting and killing these people. That's what I like to read about. So <laughs> I really want to finish this today. Um, it's going to be kind of hard, I feel like, because it is such a large manga, but I think I can do it. Manga reads quicker, and then I really want to get to Parasite Volume 1 as well that I have not started at all. So those are my updates. I need to go because it is time for me to start the next reading sprint and I haven't even made the link yet. I think I can pick these up. Here's what I've read and have been reading and will be working on today. wrap this up quickly. It's getting kind of late. I need to go to sleep soon, but I have to film and edit this first, but I've clearly already gotten ready for bed. So we're filming this cozy style. I wanted to wrap up what I finished today for you guys. So I did complete the audiobook as well as reading along Physically for Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And this ended up being a five out of five star book for me. I mean, I'm absolutely floored by how much I enjoyed this. I'll talk about it more in my wrap up for the month, but this just truly blew me away from start to finish. Like I do not have enough praise for this book. I feel like I need to see what else she has written and just everything about it breaking it down like on a more objective, like structural level, I think that it was just absolutely stellar. So love this, read this today. I also finished In the House in the Dark of the Woods today. And this, I gave a 3.75 out of five stars cause I completed it. And I was like, what the heck did I just read? I have no idea what any of that means. So I did find some like articles online that I am going to spend some time reading more about just cause it'll drive me insane if I don't. Because basically, I think the author was trying to like deconstruct typical fairy tale tropes, especially when it comes to witches and different things involving women and how women are typically portrayed and seen in fantasy. So I loved the tone and it very much felt like just reading from an unreliable narrator who you never knew like what was actually happening or what was in a dream state. And I like that. I do not think you're meant to fully understand what was happening in this book, but I feel like it needs a reread and I do need to read some more about it, but I had a fabulous time reading it. Definitely don't regret it. I also finished Parasite today, the manga volume one of this manga, which I give a four and a half out of five stars. 
I truly enjoyed this. It is the trope of one boy keeping all these secrets, hoping he can like save the world because he knows a secret and he's working with this parasite as he is the host for the parasite that these parasites have come taken over humans. They're trying to basically help save the world from humanity and they only eat their own kind. So they're eating other humans. Uh, absolutely love this and definitely want to continue on with it. Sadly, I did not get to read any more of Tomi today, but this is one I will continue reading throughout the month. Um, but I just had wanted to get a couple things read. I didn't plan on reading In the House in the Dark of the Woods, so I think that's why this didn't get completed. And then the only other thing I started today is Basketful of Heads by Joe Hill. It is really good so far, but I'm only this far into it. So it's quite long, but if you can see the artwork, like I had to stop reading it because I'm sitting there uh, scared and I just got way too scared to keep reading this at night. Like, look at this art. Um, that's wonderful. Like it's great, but I need to truly read this in the daytime. Cause it's clearly like, like look at his eyes. It's clearly like a home invasion. And yeah, these guys are from Shawshank Prison. And you can see Shawshank Prison, Derby County, Maine. And I just think that's funny because Joe Hill is obviously Stephen King's son. And I just read Shawshank Redemption. So yeah, I'm really excited to continue on with this. Unfortunately, it won't be completed for the readathon. But let's do a quick recap of everything I finished and begun. So I read At the Mountains of Madness by H.P. Lovecraft, The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe, Carmilla by Sheridan Le Fanu, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, In the House in the Dark of the Woods by Laird Hunt, Witches Volume 1 by quite a few collaborators, Bangs by Sarah Anderson, Parasite by Hitoshi Iwaki, Blood on the Tracks by Shuzo Shimi Volume 1, A Bit Into Basketful of Heads by Joe Hill, and the first couple chapters of Tomi by Junji Ito. So that is so much. Let's count. Okay, yeah, so that is three full books, two of them classics, two short stories, two full graphic novels, two full manga volumes, and then I began one other manga and one other graphic novel. So I'll take it. That's a win for me. Um, please comment and tell me, did you guys join in the reading sprints this weekend? Did you guys like doing the readathon? I would love to hear if you'd like to do something like this again in the future because it was a lot. I had to stop doing sprints at one point because I just spent so much time reading this weekend, but I had so much fun and I'm thankful to all of you guys who joined in. Please tell me what was your favorite thing you read this weekend if you participated. And if you didn't, um, just tell me something you read cool this weekend anyways, or your thoughts on any of these books. I would love to hear. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.